Just play. Everyone, welcome back. Uh, we are continuing with our adventure uh, for uh, role player adventures. And we are on now on book two, which is basically the adventure two, which is Taran's Trophy, written by James Ryan. And we have set up most of everything. So we have the map for Taran's Trophy here, which is a beautiful countryside with a beach the side placed uh, the XP tokens as well, and then uh, randomized most of the uh, encounter tokens here. Set up everything again. Got our two titles already, which is the Revealer of Secrets and the Aid to Ogre. And most of our hand back. So now we will just continue and start out with the story at hand. Okay, that says here, your adventure begins. The Dragul invasion has ended. Your regiment marches north into the swamps, where the Dragul continues to plot against Nalos. While your fellow soldiers head to battle, you have been sent to the halfling town of Yolev on orders from King Taran to fetch the head of a giant troll. The coast here is lined with, the gr with grassy bluffs and sandy beaches. A light breeze carries the smell of the sun warm sea. There's a slight smokiness in the air, and you recall with keen anticipation Yolib's reputation for producing the finest flavored hams in all of Nalus. Right, nice. Let's place our marker here in A, and we continue on. So at the moment, we don't have much of these uh, keywords, so we just collect our XP. And then continue on. Standing along the town square, the mayor welcomes you to Yolev. Sorry for this humble greetings, he says, but everyone is in hiding. He gestures around you and sees that the boards cover the windows of every shop but the blacksmiths. Several seconds floor shutters are cracked open so that a curious eye can watch you. Thank heavens for the king's guard, shouts the mayor, hoping his citizens will hear. We place our troubles in your capable hands. The mayor exits and windows closes. The blacksmith's hammer rings out of a lonely sound. So across the empty cobble square, you find an old staff sling. Okay. We get the staff sling, which is 93. Sorry for it. In here. And it is a staff sling. Looks like, what is that? It has some sort of, uh, what do they call those? Sling. Yeah, staff slings. That's what <laughs> it's a sling, basically, but staff. And it's uh, like, luckily we can use it uh, anytime because it doesn't have any stamina cost. And we continue on. You interview the blacksmith Rose and notice that she wears a ring with an eye shaped insignia. You, rec you, you recognize it as the mark of the starlit door. A secretive group researching the ancient mysteries of Nalos. Rose tells you that young Esther Dunegrass has gone missing. Many fear that she was taken by the troll. The Dunegrass farm lies along the western road. Okay. Esther was last seen at the beach to the east. So maybe that's that is that part. Are you really planning to fight a giant troll alone? Oh, we will try. She asks skeptically. Then she pulls something from a chest in the back of her shop. This charm isn't much in the way of protection, but it's all I have for now. Come back later and I'll have something for you. So it says here, we look for all the runic items. Sorry. Uh, runic armors. So we need to look for all the runic armors. Okay, one, two, three, five. I think that's it. And then we shuffle them up. And we just draw one randomly for us. So that's he is actually giving us the runic signet. Okay. It manipulates black. Okay. And we get title card 12, which is Smith's Hammer. 
Rose the halfling blacksmith welcomes you to Yolif and offers to sell your weapons in her shop. She wore a mysterious ring with the insignia of the starlit door. I'll take that. And then we can just move on to the other location, right? We can use the item, the sling, here on the on Yolif. Let's see what we do with us. So as you look around, you will have to see if anyone is missing a staff sling. The black Miss Rose just shrugs. Go ahead, keep it, she says. <laughs> okay. Means even though we just picked up. So we just continue on. Let's see what we get here. So, sorry. Should I, should I put that extra? Yeah, I think I might have placed that extra. So we just continue to. What is this? Encounter two. Two, two. Let's see what they have. As you make your way along a well worn dirt road, you hear a cry for help in the distance. You race to the sound and find a halfling couple pinned beneath an overturned cart. They beg for your help, saying that a group of bandits attacked them and stole their pony and all their gold. They identify themselves as the Dune Grass family and mention that they are eager to get back to looking for their lost daughter. A few feet from them, you spy their weapon as an expensive looking short sword lying on the ground. Hmm? Please don't take that, they plead. It's the only defense we have. So, hated by trolls, trolls follow, trolls ally, trolls there. We don't have that. We can assist the halflings and chase the, them down. So, I think we can. We just chase the bandits, right? Because it's either we assist the halflings or we take and steal their sword. I think we, since they're the Dune Grass family, and that we're trying to find them. Uh, we will try to assist them. And says here, after freeing the Dune Grass, you easily catch up to the bandits in a shallow vale among the hills. They outnumber you, and they are ready to fight. So we are fighting a gang of bandits. So enemy one, gang of bandits here. And then we are looking for the modifier, which is a the gang of bandits. Thanks. Looks like that's not something we might want to uh, like fight with, right? Because they're a lot, and we are already going to be losing some stuff because of it. Can actually try to zoom in a little bit if you want. Place it there. So now we'll, our dice limit will be reduced by one. We currently have a four dice limit. What we can do, sorry, I forgot to put this back. I haven't done any fatigues yet. We can, I think we can draw one for white. So we will fatigue one, right? And get one white die. And we can do the same for blue. Get it. And then the other one we can just do randomly. And it's another blue. Hey, gives us more chances. And then just roll for it. Okay. Okay, we have a four, two, four. Hmm. I think we can work with that. So now, go back. Could change anything to red. We don't want to at the moment. We want to put make that white. We can uptick it down by one. We can flip it. Oh, okay, if you flip it, we can flip it, and then. I'll pick one by one. It'll become a two automatically, right? So I think that's a good one. We prioritize that first. We change it to three on that side using our spell book. And then, uh, sorry, our manipulate. And then using our spell book, we lessen it by one, making it two. We gain two gold because of that. 
And then we need to make this to a tree somehow. Hmm. Oh, if we flip a blue, we can flip a blue, it's a tree. So let's flip a blue, it's now a tree. I'll take that using our diplomacy. And then we have what, how many cards more? We, uh, we played three cards. We can play one more or use the bonus limit. Hmm. Ah, and last one. Oh, wait. But it's the same. It's okay. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, I think I see something. There we go. We, can, we, have, we will have to use our bonus limit. So we can uptake a blue to a three. Uh, two now to a three, right? And then we can change any three, so it will be unspent, to a, any, any color, which we can change it to a red. So that is now there. So because of that, we will get, we, got, or we already got a one gold or two gold. We get another two gold. And then we get one XP. Sorry, let's put a marker here. I keep on forgetting that. We get one XP and another two gold. We're assuming it's gold at the moment. But because we didn't complete this last one, he will damage us for one. And we will lose one gold. And next round, we will now have a full combat dice. We'll have four. Sorry. We can drop one. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Got it. Let's see. Now, since this is a multicolored one, we don't care about the color. We just pick four. One, two, three, four. Ooh, we got our familiar. Okay. We need a five. Just give me any five. Ugh, 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 ugh. We have a one, six, two, and three. We can actually increase. It's only increase though. And. Uh, Purple, there we go. We can decrease our purple by one or reroll it. So we will change this to a five, matching that one. That's it. We gain one gold because of it. So it was like a, a good reset, right? And we have defeated the Gang of Bandits. No matter how many of you are, they're all defeated. So put this back in hand and this card goes back when the spent stays. Right. So uh, this is gone. It says here, go two nine, what's two nine? Even though the bandits outnumbered you, you dispose of them quickly. You return to the side of the overturned card to give the dune grasses back their coin, but they have already gone. We gain one gold. Thank you. We can rest, I don't think so, and we just move on. So we go to the ancient chapel. Uh, it's B for the ancient chapel. So we get the XP it's, that is on the chapel. Sorry, I keep on putting that way. Ancient buildings, buildings of Nalus are held sacred by law. No trespassing is permitted and looters are imprisoned. So you're surprised to hear that sounds coming from the inside. Call for splashes of light filter through fractured stained glass in chapel vaulted ceiling. A Dergulian bell hangs high above a marbled altar which, for, which faces rows of stone benches. Rounding the altar, you find a muscular gnome 
a wooden mallet in hand standing over a door in the ground that has no obvious lack or latch. You can see that the door is made of dergulium, just like the chest of Black Lake. Okay. The gnome speaks in a low voice, just in time, he says. Give me a hand with this door. He has guts inviting the king's guard to help him loot an ancient site. The gnome stands to offer you his mallet, and as he does so, you notice a branded mark on his arm in the shape of an eye. It seems that he is a member of the Starlit Door. Perhaps he can teach you the secrets of this chapel, or perhaps he conspires against the King of Peace. So we can actually arrest the gnome, or we can offer to help him open the door. But I remember, right, just on their last encounter, that the blacksmith who gives us the, the actual runic one is a member of the Starlit Door. So I guess it's best to uh, to you know, to help him. So, so I guess our choice is to actually just help him because I don't think we want to arrest him, even though he's trying to knock down the, like the king's favor or something like that, right? So, let's go to B3. The gnome smiles and hands you his mallet. I knew it. Adventurers after my own heart. Gimlix is my name. We do gain a favor of the starlet's door. Door's favor. He bows in the traditional gnomish greetings and steps aside. You bring the mallet down with great force upon the door, which shrinks out with a lovely tone. As you sound the echoes around the chapel, you hear a faint reson resonance from the bell above. Hear that? Bell and door are both made of dergulium. Secrets of one must lie in the other. Gimlis takes the mallet back and adds it into his pack with a sigh. Sadly, no one knows how to make their gulim anymore. He says, The closest thing we have is elvish silver, but even the elves can only produce crude imitations of work like this. Gimlis stands and shoulders his pack. I have an appointment to keep in Undercity. I leave this mystery to you. If you do solve it, look us up. You can tell anyone in my order that you know Gimlix as a friend. He shows you the branded mark on his arm once again. The eye watches over us all. He says cryptically, then bids you farewell. We reveal title card seven. We're working through all these title cards now. And said, it's friend of Gimlix. As at an ancient site in Yolab, you discovered a gnomish member of the Starlit Door. Instead of arresting him as King's Guard, Skinks, a skinks guard should you let him tell you about his quest of to unearth powerful ancient artifacts okay and now we can use the item we can try to use the staff sling here maybe so let's try that ringing the bell seems like a good idea you load your staff sling with a bit of rubble from the chapel floor and sling it at the bell it makes a soft pleasant note that vibrates the dergulium door but the door does not open. Maybe it would work better if you have some other kind of ammunition. Ooh, something to think about. I guess we just move on to the next, right? You can go to the beach or the farm first. She was last seen at the beach. But maybe we try to investigate the farm first and see what we can go. So we go through this one. And what is this? We encounter one. So we go to two one. You hear a, t a horrible squeal and run to discover a pig lying in a ravine. It must have fallen and broken a leg. It rides in pain and fear. The pig is pink with dark spots, one of which resembles a, blo a black swan. You can see the whole ravine clearly from the where you stand because of a rocky overhang that obscures... So we are here already. Most of the ravine floor. You hear a rustling sound coming from beneath it. Do you want to investigate the overhang? You can see the whole ravine and make it. Or we can help. I think let's try to help the pig, right? <laughs> Free food. Because the investigation requires dex and constitution, and I only have one on both. But we can manipulate black at the moment. And our most the, the green one we have is already there. The, the, 
helping the pig requires a fight. I, uh, why not? Let's try the overhang. Let's investigate the overhang. So let's go to the overhang. As you approach the overhang, you notice the pincer of a giant scorpion. It must have stung the pig as bait, to hoping to catch a farmer in its trap. Ha ha ha, there you go. You duck behind a rock and wait in time, the creature will need to sting its bait again. If you remain hidden, you can take the scorpion by surprise. So we will have first kill check in this one. So we will do concealment. This one requires black, green, black. Dice limit of four. We do have a dice limit of four. Uh, we can spend the black, yes, to get a certain black. And spend the green as well. Make sure that we have an actual green die. And I think we just do random on the other two. Ooh, lucky one. Okay, now hopefully we get a good roll. Okay, four, three, one, two. Oh, okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. So two immediately goes here. Green is solved. Three is immediately goes here. Black is solved. And for black, we have one from our skill. There we go. We are using the unholy flail. Shh. You increase black or purple die by one, so we're increasing this to five, and ha, just like that, it is done. So we get two XP points for that one. Sometimes the dice is your friend. Well, it's back. And then it says here, pass. If you pass, go to 223. We got 223 here. It says, you don't have to wait long before the venom's effect on the pig begins to wear off and the giant scorpion emerges it to sting it again. While it is distracted, you approach it from behind and drive your weapon through its head. The pig struggles to its feet again. It looks like it looks you in the eye as if to thank you and then runs off into the hills. Oh, I shouldn't catch that. We can do a rest now if you want to. We have five in the bag and then two in here, or we just move on to the next location. That's it. All I got was XP. Yeah, sure, why not? Let's go to the dune grass farm. I think so. So we go to D. So we collect the XP from here. So we are now at the dune grass farm. At the farmhouse door, you are greeted by a note. Gone to look for Esther. Will return with her or not at all. They've left a shovel leaning against the porch railing. Perhaps it will come in handy. So reveal the score of 574. Okay, and it is a shovel. Requires one stamina, so if you want to keep on using it, we will need to dig. Yikes, okay. We can use an item. Why not, right? Let's dig here. Maybe we can get something. So D74, so let's spend one stamina from the supply. D74. The only thing you can use a shell for here is cleaning out the pig pens. Is that how you want to spend your time? <laughs> okay, yes, please. Yeah, sure, why not? Let's, let's choose a player to do the work, which us, D12. You find an empty pig pen and clean it out. The shovel does not seem well suited to this task. It takes you quite some time to improve the dune grass farm's manure heap. They are sure to be grateful if they ever make it home again. Good work. Okay, we add three stamina from the supply. One, two. 
three. And I think now is the time to rest. We have three, six, nine. Yeah, I think it's time. Now is the time. We we can now do a rest. I think we just think we just need one die. We might need one die only, right? Because we have a chance. If you do two dice, there is a chance for like a bigger one. Let's do one die. So we are now resting. When you rest, you just spend your one XP. And then depending on how many XP you have that you've spent, you pick a die and then just roll it. And you rest for one. <laughs> Yikes. And then you basically fill this up as before. So one, one, three, and one. Then this goes back to my hand. We then add a marker here. So we know that we already rested once. And that's it. Well, it wasn't much of a rest, it seems. So I guess we go this route. So let's move on to this area. And this is a four. It says here, if you have the title at all, we're going to two five. Which is we do. Since we have the title card to ogre, go to two five. As the trail crests a hill, you are met by an ogre in the shade of an oak of an old tree. You recognize the creature as Tog, whom you spared from way oh, back from Tarek Nolan's blade. He seems happy to see you, though his speech is rough. You understand that he has been stealing from the locals and would like to give you some of his loot. The ogre holds out his hand with a single gold coin and a piece of armor, offering them to you. Okay, so we can accept the gift, basically thanking him. So basically, most probably he'll give us a gold coin and armor. Or we can just tell him that it's dangerous for him to remain in Nalus and he needs to stop sealing and head home. I think he, since we want to really help him, right? Let's do two. Let's, let's go tell him to find his way home. Stop stealing. Tog seems disappointed you will not take his gift. He tells you that he is indebted to you for life and that he hopes to find you a gift worthy for you one day. To your suggestion that he leaves now, he says that there is nowhere to, else to go. That the Ragul city states that have been destroyed by planar rifts and Nalos is the only safe realm. He, he thanks you again for saving his life, then sticks back into the woods and is gone from sight. Just like that, he's gone. Okay, well, it looks like he might even give me like even more better gifts. <laughs> we can just have to go to the beach now, it seems. The beach. Collect the XP. A small fire burns on the beach, but there is no one in sight. Find no sign of the giant troll and no sign of Esther, the missing dune grass girl. Suddenly, you hear rough voices being belt, being voices belting out a ballad of the Dragul invasion. Following the song to its source, you uncover two stinking drunk halflings lying in the damp sand beneath an overturned rowboat. They must be fishers by trade, for they smell equally, <laughs> for they smell equally of drink and out of the sea. Hey, don't you know where there's a troll about? One yells at you. Then he whispers, you ought to be less conspicuous, which both halflings burst out laughing. <laughs> yeah. They seem to be enjoying themselves, but they are also invulnerable here. It isn't safe to be intoxicated when dragons stalk the beach. As king's guard, you have some duty to intervene. Then again, the beach appears empty. What's the harm in letting them have their fun? So we have some choices. We can challenge them to a drinking contest, which requires strength and constitution. How does a singing contest require strength? I don't understand. Sing them a song requires wisdom and charisma, which we might be a little bit good at. Or the beach is not safe and help them get home. 
which requires some dexterity and charisma. So it's either we do singing him a song, which is benefits us a little bit, right? So, so let's try to sing him a song. Wisdom and charisma, C4. You clear your throat, <clears throat> straighten your back, and remind yourself to sing from the belly. Then you burst into the song of the immortal knight of Nalos. His song is full of heroic tales from the war. The band sit up to listen. So we have a skill check of charm. See how we go for this charm skill check. I think that's a better way. Skill tech charm requires a dice limit of four again, and it requires. Uh, or was that? Wisdom and charisma. So purple and white. Purple and white. We can spend some purple and white now, I think. I think we can spend one purple and one white. Let's do that. So two, four, six, eight, ten. So we get one white. One purple. And then we just randomly the other two. Yeah, so far we're doing well, I think. And we get blue and green. So let's roll it. Okay, the white immediately goes here. We have that, that's good. And we have a six blue and a six green and a purple four. Okay, so what we can do we do with that one? So we can increase. No, we need to decrease it, right? Oh, actually the purple four actually goes here already. Right, so we just need a three. How do we make it to a three? I can reduce the blue by one going to five the go to five and then flip it is two right so five so we can flip it again then we need to change it again right We're going to re-roll it. But we still need to change it to purple. And uh, as long as it's three and four, we can change it to purple. So we can do that. So far, I think we do a re-roll. I think that's the best way. Because this upticks it by one. Maybe five, and we can uptick it again. Don't think so. We don't think there. We have another uptick. We can only, we can switch it to six. If we can switch it to one and uptick it by one, it will become two. We need one more. What does my runic stuff? I have two runic ones, right? Just a minute. We have two runic ones. Um, runic amulet and runic. What do they do? This one changed purple and this one changes black. I think what we might want to do is use our realign. So, so this is a little bit of first card to use. Let's use our realign. Draw two black. And draw it. Oh, wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. I think this is the better option. We use our enchant. Right? We use our enchant. We draw a random colored, we draw a random colored die, and it's already set by four. So and then I think we can change that color of the four to anything we want to, and then just manipulate it after. So, hey, we're lucky. Change this to a four because of our enchant. And then 
we have uh, I think we have something it's increase oh it's increase right we have it there we go purple using a runic amulet we can decrease or increase our purple by one So this is now a three success. So because of that, we get two XP. And this is considered complete. Okay. Uh, where were we with the song? Your song impresses them, okay? It says, making noise when a giant troll is on the loose is not particularly wise. But caution be damned. It feels good to, be, to belt out a song on this beach. When your singing is done, the halfling cheers and slaps you back like, you, like you're an old friend from the war. Here you go, one says, and hands you a map. This will get you, a, this will get you to the Longtooth Island, he tells you. We were out there today and saw a shiny thing floating in the air. Take our boat if you like. The king's guard should investigate. You, you inquire about the troll and the missing dune grass girl, but the fishers say they haven't seen either. But to be fair, one says, we've been under the boat most of the day. Reveal discovery card two. What is this called? The card two. Ooh, cool. It's Long Tooth Island and should be placed on four. Okay, and place one XP on it. And we can actually, we, we might need to rest. Might need to rest again. Yeah, because we are overly fatigued. So I think we can do a two XP rest. Do we want to do a two XP? Yeah, let's do a two XP. And then we get two dice. And we get six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. That's good. Then we put another marker here. So that's a second. So the moment we reach like the fourth one, like if we if we did the rest for the fifth time, we'll have to discard the card uh, and put it back to the market. Okay, I think that's it. Can use it. We can. Wait, we can check something if there is something here in uh, on the beach. Let's see the C ninety three first. See if it helps. The empty cradle of your staff saying flaps in the wind as the beach. It makes a sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's it, basically. We, we, we raised it up and just did, did that. So now, let's do the... Let's try to do the steel shovel, right? Maybe we can find some sort of gold here. So, since we it, had, it cost one, we have to use one fatigue and C74. Says here, you dig around the beach for a bit and find no treasure, but plenty of crabs to eat. You strike a fire and have a quick snack. Each player returns one stamina from your fatigue box to supply. <laughs> so basically, it, it, it cancels itself out. <laughs> what the heck? Okay, and then I guess we have to just continue through Longtooth Island. So we are going out to eat. So we collect XP. The halfling's boat is small but sturdy. You row your way out to a sandy island top with a bit of grass and a few palm trees. There's strange stillness here. No gulls hover overhead. No crabs scuttle across the beach. Even the wind seems to steal as you, steep, as you step onto the shore. At the island center, a shiny ball of elvish silver floats in the midair. We can grab the ball. 
elvish silver floats in the beer, in the center of the island. So in the center of this island, that's the only thing we can do. Yeah, so let's grab the ball. Reaching for the floating ball of elvish silver, you find something thick surrounding it. Thick enough to stop your hand before it reaches the prize. You try to push forward, but the strange something surrounding the ball drips heavily around your arm and begins to squeeze, pulling you inward and sucking away your weapons. Reveal the ooze enemy card. Yikes. Number is that? 43? That sounds bad. Catches us off guard. Ooh. Look at that. Each player place one weapon from your card hand or spent space under the ooze. Okay. Sure, this forced. So anything from my hand or a spent space, let's put that in this, under the ooze. Okay. Ooze 43. Okay. Let's try to defeat this. Uh, let's put our marker in. So it requires purple, green, red. That's red. Check that. Okay. That requires a purple, black. Red and black or green. So I think you can change something to purple most of the time. You can change anything to black. Since the black has two options, let's get a black. So let's spend our dexterity and get a black die. And I think the others we can just skip to just uh, random chance, right? Let's try to do that. So we are getting two more, three more dice. What do we want? What do we want? Give me purple or blue. Something good. We have the green, which is good. And lastly is red. Ah, cool. So only the purple is, is the missing one. Maybe we can change it. Okay, nothing matches. There is no match. We want, oh, we have a green. No, it's purple. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think priority is this because it's, this is a three attack, right? Skip that white first. Can do something with a. We don't have a purple card yet. We can realign, add two blacks. Can if you want to. That's another option. No, this is already red. So we just want to uptick it, right? Can up, can we uptick a red? Then I'll take a purple. Hmm. You can only uptake purple, black, and white. Yeah, because we have two purple upticks here. And blue and green. You can uptake the green by one if you want to. So it will match that. Now it needs to be. Needs to be losing our mind here. Okay, we're losing our mind here. How do we update that? You can do it with three cards using this, this, and then where is that? This, 
So uptick. So we change the red to white. Uptick it by one, and then change it back to red. Too much for one card, but I think that's the only option for that one. For the black, you can uptick it by two using this, covering this one. So that matches our limit. All right. So I think that's the way. Okay, so first we are using the spell book. No, no, sorry. We are using the relentless to change this to white. So this is now considered white. Three white. And then we will use our spell book to uptick it to four. Right? And then we will use our resolute to change back to red, raising it there. So that's three play limit. We would then gain an XP because of that. Next is we will use our unholy flail, maxing our limit to four, increase the black die by one or two. We're increasing it by two, change it to three, right? That's our limit. Uh, we gain one gold because of that. And what can we do with the, we can flip a blue if you want. But then still blue. What can we do with the green? We can reroll the green if we want to as a last resort. Maybe we get a five. No, but we already did, did our four day limit. So it's rerolling is that the same? It's okay. So because of that, we will uh, damage two, three. Basically three fatigue and one XP because of the second round. We then draw four new cards, four new dice. Do you want to put a black or a purple in? How many do we have? We have two, four, six, eight. Yeah, let's put in a purple. So pull out the purple. Do you want to put it a green? Keep, I keep on forgetting my illusionist power because I can return two stamina from two in the supply and then we can change a die and the dice pull to any value. Yeah, keep on, keep on forgetting that. And then last one is we just draw three. One, two, three. Hey, good. We got one green at least. Okay. Let's see what we get. There's six, four red. Would have been helpful last time. Two green and four purple. So choices like that, right? First, purple. I can use an up ticket to about one if you want to. And then it's only three. The green, we can uptick it by one if we want to, but it needs to be five, right? We can we a purple, blue. Mm, 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 mm. Can we change a white to any color? can change a white to a purple if we want to, right? So we can change first, we, uh, I think I have that, yes. So we use this, we use manipulate on the white. So now it goes back to one. And then we use weak, change any color to purple, matching this. Lastly, we want, we can use our illusionist power, return two stamina from your int attribute to the supply, change the dice pool to any value. 
and we will change this to a five. And this is now spent. That's it. So we gain one gold because of that and one XP. That was a bit of a puzzle, but it's okay. So this goes back to me. This all clears. This is gone. This is gone. What happens? Wait, sorry. What happens to the if we succeed? Uh, what was that one? Sorry, the ooze. E4. Let's go to E4. You pull your weapon free of the ooze, ripping it apart in the process. There is nothing left of the creature except the ball of elvish silver floating in a stinking pool of moth. Reveal Discovery 85. Okay. Hope that's good. And it's a ball of elvish silver. It costs one stamina as well. It's bad. And then record the keyword muck. Finally, our first keyword. Muck. And then return any cards from the ooze to their owner's hand. Okay, good. Thought it would break. <laughs> I didn't want it to break. I think if we lose, then it will probably break. And then we can use an item, rest, or move to another location. Oof, oof, oof. We can rest again if we want to, but then there's nothing much here left. We can go back that way. Before we rest, I think let's try maybe to use the... Oh wait, Sil Elvish Silver. We can go back to the ch to the chapel. We can go back to the chapel and open the door. I think that's what we can do. So I think how many do we have? Two, four, six, eight, nine. I think we can work with that. It's fine. So we go back here. Go back to the beach and skip those because there's no XP. And let's go to this side. What is this tree encounter? Venture key tree. On the side of the road, you see a series of large hanging cages, all empty save one, which contains a disheveled human calling out for help. Get me out of here, he cries. It wasn't me, I swear. Hmm? He shows you a few gold coins he somehow managed to keep with him. Look, he says, they're all yours if you let me out. As King's Guard, it is within your duties to dispense justice, so you ask about his case. He claims to be the son of a noble, heir to the lost castle of Carleval, wandering disguised as a beggar. A plump gray-haired gray farm, farmer lost her prized pig. It had a black spot shaped like a swan, and suspicious locals blamed him for the theft. Oh, it's it. That's where the... No, it, 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 it was eaten by the scorpion. I ask you, why would I steal when I have gold to pay with? But he digresses and smells unlike any noble you've ever met. Is he a lying pig thief or a noble that stinks? I think he's a noble that stinks because we saw the pig, right? So we declare him innocent and free him from the cage. So we require a strength or a dex. We go to 211. Breaking the lock is not as easy as you find. As you have first thought, it is a sturdy dwarven make. We have a skill check of force. Okay. And red, black, red, black. Dice limit of four. We can spend one red. Make sure we have one. Where's our red dice? Red dice. There we go. Great. And let's try to fix this. Give me random. Give me random. Uh, 
one. Last. Yes, please. That's what I wanted. Maybe another one. White. Okay. And white. E. X. Okay. Fine. We can change white. Give me something good. Four white, six black, four red, and four white. Okay, 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 okay. Let's see, there's a lot of things there. A lot of things. Wait, we can actually do this first, maybe. Let's, let's, let's do this. Let's make that our last resort. Uh, by one or two. Increase only. But we're max it. Need to lower it. It's the opposite. This is three. We can flip a black if we want or reroll it. If we want to reroll it, at least we want we use this instead, right? And reroll the blue or green. No, we can change any color to a red. Ooh, we can do that. No, it's black. It's the opposite of this. Oh, we can do that. We can use manipulate, flip a white into a three. Use weak, change the color, anything into a red. We'll put this in the red pile. And then mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay, let's do that the opposite way. Sorry, let's put that to four again. All right? What we can do, I think, is the better option. We we increase the white. All right? Increase increase the white to five. Uh, to five. Oh no. Then flip it back to two, then the weak. So it's red. No, that's fine. I think that's the, the other The other one was correct. That was a better option. Okay. That was the better option. Now, what else can we do? Wait, no. Let's change that. I think the first bet, since we have two blacks here, is to do a realign. Right? We draw two blacks and reroll it. So let's put this away first so I don't hit it. Do something good. 6 2. So bad. So these are dice now. The two we can increase by one. Yep. First one is we use that. Where is it? Piece of black, die by one or two. So this can now be three. I think this is the four, right? Current it was two. We can increase it by one. So we did our first hand limit. One. If we use this, that's two. 
change this to three, right? right? I think we should, let's change it to four instead. That's right, it's so three. Now we just need a two, red two. How do we change that red to two? How do we change the red into two? Flipped it will be decrease it. Oh wait, yeah, yeah we can. So uh, two dice is now. We can use a spell book to decrease it. Oh, actually, we don't need to do that. Where's the other one? Ah, oh, it's there. The resolute is there. Oh my god, I thought it was on my hand. Yeah, change any, any color to four and three, right? That's what we wanted to look at. Oh my God, we are gonna fail this strength test. Ever the use two cards. Convert any red to any color. But... Oh, we can use this to convert the red to a black. So that's now a black. So we've used three cards. We have two left if we want to. How do we make a red two? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. So we have two cards left that we want to do. Four. We already have too many fours. I think the only way is we we have three we, we can you can use for three right so because this is the two the discard we use spell book we use spell book first to lower it by one no we use spell book to increase it by one then we use manipulate to flip it two and lastly just change it to a red using wheat but we had to use our bonus play limit because of that so this is now the opposite and we get two xp for that Woo. i think that was a headache <laughs> okay and this card is back to hand I was a headache. Next, uh, so what did we do? We did a force. So two thirteen. You you definitely unlock the cage and the man leaps to the ground. He briefly thanks you and heads off into the hills. Reveal title card six. He just ran away. Reveal title card sixty eight. Gain three gold. <laughs> money, money, money. Is there a way to like convert gold to XP? And then we can now rest and move on to the next location. We have to go to the ancient chapel, right? So first we have uh is Dunton's return. It says here you you met a ha man hanging in the roadside cage who claimed to be a noble falsely accused of stealing local pigs. They set him free and he ran off into the hills. And then it says here, Duntum's acquaintance. You met a man who claims to be a noble son and the rightful heir to the throne of the lost palace, Castle Carleval. 
So because we freed him, he's now free. And then I think we need to rest. Yeah, we really need to rest. So we think we can rest for two. Gain two dice. Roll it. And it's eight. So two, four, six, eight. Let's uh, turn that one, two, three, one, two, two, three. Dip this back. Dip this as well, and put a marker here. Okay, so we go to ancient chapel, and then from the ancient chapel, I think is what we want to do is use the ball of elder silver with the sling so we will try to uh, sling the, the 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 bell right this is, this is the bell yes it's the bell so the ancient chapel so we have to spend one of that and then it says b 8593 with your staff sling you fling the ball of elder silver into the into the dergolium bell above which rings out a crisp and lovely sound Immediately, the Dergolium door slides open, the, the earth quakes, and the air above fills with crackling green energy. You hurry through the door into the, an underground chamber. On a pedestal there, you find a gauntlet carved from a single piece of jade, and you slip it into one of the chainmail Dergolium socks that Charak gave you. The quake sees, the quake sees, and the air above is quiet. You take a moment to admire the chamber walls, which are carved with scene of, scene of the arrival. When the Azima first brought together many words, words thousands of years ago through the gate of Breezer Wall. The gate is powered by six artifacts, and this gauntlet is one of them. Ooh, yes, this is the Thanos artifact. Called Keyword Discover. For us. And reveal rare card number 28. Ooh, it's our first rare card. What it is? What is it? What is it? The Jade Gauntlet. Cool. Change anything to six. And that's it. Uh, we can rest and move on to another location. What the her? I guess. It, does it say that we lost the? No, it doesn't say. It doesn't say we lost it. Okay. Uh, sorry. Maybe sorry. We we want to be first before doing that. I think. I think we say go back to B. Right? It says if you have discover keywords, which we do. The ancient chapel is cold and empty. To open the open and door sits on a multicolored patch of sunlight that filters through the fractured stained glass. The chamber below is now empty. Maybe we go back to Yolev and see what we can get. Let's go back to Yolev. Uh, that's it. If there is no XP at this location, you return to Yolev and approach the blacksmith rose. As she set out her wares as she does, you notice again that insignia of the starlit door on an old ring that she wears for the keyword market. Okay. Where's that freaking ogre? <laughs> Shuffle the weapon deck and reveal two cards. Place them face up next to the adventure map to create a market. Okay. We can buy a weapon of Rose. Okay, so first shuffle. One, two. We can buy that. We can buy the ancient spear. Uptake's a blue. We can uptake a green. We can already uptake a blue and green, I think. We have that, right? But we can uptake it one more. So we can do it once. And the black is the other one, right? 
it says two greens. Is it two, is it, when it says two greens, is it we can do it twice on the die or two dice? Maybe twice on a die, I think. So I think maybe we, we pay for the spike shield, right? I think that's the better option. Pay for the spike shield. Or one, two, three, four, five, six. And the other one, we just leave, we leave as it is. So we bought a weapon from Rose. Now, if it says here, if you're... Starlight door favor is one higher. You can ask Rose about the insignia on her ring, which we will actually. You have the keyword ring, we don't. The insignia on Rose's ring is a perfect replica of the eye of the starlit door. When you ask about it, she looks extremely the eye to assess your attention. Then she invites you in the back for a shop where she keeps a writing desk, a few chairs, and an old branding iron. The ring belonged to my great grandmother, Rose tells you. My family has always held an interest in the fate of our world. The cosmos must be balanced with Ulos at the center of it. She opens a drawer in her writing desk and hands you a folded square of parchment on which is printed a statement by Ulong. Ulog? A Ulog? Ulog Gorp. The classical frog, frog, frogkin sage who argues that all ancient objects must be reclaimed from, the, from their Dergulian tombs. Keep it, says Rose. It'll make your sense to you in time. I have a feeling you are on the right path. Choose a player. Increase int attribute score by one. And add one stamina to it. Okay, sure. We can increase ourselves by one. So we are now at four. And then put one. Record the keyword ring. And we can then move to another location. Okay, I guess we move to the dune grass farms again. Maybe let's see what maybe something has changed there, right? Yeah, we've just been walking around here trying to find the ogre and start dune grass. Uh huh. If there is no XP at this location, D1. A farm is noisy with pigs, but empty of halflings. That's it. Go back to the beach again. Uh, if you have any of the keyword lost, bruise, or blood, we don't. Otherwise, can, if there is no XP on this location, C1. The beach is quiet and lovely with curfling and sun warm sand. The fishes have gone home, but their boat remains. It's like to set sail for Longtooth Island. What the her? Did I miss something? A, B, C, D. Maybe we go back. The chapel. Four. Okay, we go back to the chapel. If we have the keyword discover, go to B10. The ancient chapel is cold and empty. Oh, we already been there. Let's go back to Longcliffe Island. You have the keyword muck. Yes, go to E2. Palm trees of Longtooth Island sways gently in sea breeze. As far as you can tell, it's uninhabited now. Maybe we just use the shovel here. 74, so we use one stamina. E74. After digging, for quite some time here, and they're in the sand, you cover the island in holes. Just as you are about to give up, you shovel it, hits wood, widening your hole and uncovering a chest and work to bring it out of the sand. When you finally have it open, you find it filled with fish heads. Among the heads, there is an empty flask, a book, a body poetry, one half a size silk stocking, and some gold coins, all wet and smelling of fish rot. Gain two gold. Where else can we go? Uh, that's the only thing we did. We go to E, right?
went to the beach. We used our shovel. There's, I don't think there's no use for the ball here. We go back. Let's go back to Yolip. Maybe we find something. No keyword market, A4. Taking the sides of the quiet seaside of the town you live, it's red clay building have simple grace and the central tower of sparkling blue stone is truly a wonder. You can buy a weapon again, and uh, can, you already asked Rose about uh, so we can only buy a weapon from her. How in the hell we're lost? <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. So I guess we go to, we already went to the chapel. Let's we try the chapel again. We have the discover, we do. So we go to B10. B10 and it's just rest. So if we go to Dunegrass Farm again, D1 says the farm is noisy with pigs, but empty of halflings. We already digged here, right? I don't think we can use any of the other items here. We can't find a troll. Where's the troll? Because if you go to the beach, it's the beach. If there's no XP here, go to C1. The beach is quiet. Where the her? <laughs> I think I did everything I can. Because if we have, it's easier if we go to long two, we just go to, if we have the keyword muck, which, which we do, and we just go to E2, and just rest. And then we move to another location. Hmm, 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 hmm. Okay, I think I made a boo boo. <laughs> because a dune grass farm, right? Uh, I only took the shovel and used it immediately. I forgot to actually complete it. <laughs> so it says here, as a farmer's door, you are greeted by a note, with a gnome, right? Gone to look for Esther. As you dare to leave, you are met with a starlight sight, a muscular 20 foot tall woman with thick green skin and a brilliant trust is grabbing pigs from a nearby pen, snapping their necks with a flick of her tongue and tucking them into a massive leather sack. Looks like you found that troll. <laughs> See, that's cheese. Yeah, I think we, uh, after, after getting the card, I just went here directly. Okay. Uh, I think we tried to follow her, right? Keep a safe distance and see where she goes. I think I messed that up. <laughs> so yeah, because we, we, want to try we want to try to find Esther. And if the troll found him, I think it's best that I just keep on following them. So do D4. So it says here, you duck behind the corner of the house and watch the troll do her work. After she collects a nearly a score of pigs, she hefts the stack over her shoulders and begins to tiptoe away. It's strangely amusing to watch this giant's outsized attempt at stealth. Yet her pace is quick and her stride is long. You'll need to need your wits to read her movements and guess at her destination. If your Dragon Fairy is one higher, each player adds one stamina to their Wisdom attribute. Oh, thank you. Ignoring the usual limit. So a skill check of Observation is what we're looking for. Observation. There we go. Skill check of observation. So we require a green and white. Green and white. We can use the white to whites here as if we want to, so we can get to white dice. And yeah, it's fine. Use the constitution. 
for a green to be safe and then draw one extra oh we have another white thank you i guess we have ample chance here cool we have six one five five so we got five for both Right, the white. Ooh, 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 okay. So let's put that first. And I think for the green, we can lower it by one using this spike shield. So it'll be four now. For the white, we can use our, we have one. Changes the white thing. I remember that one. Yes, we can use our spell book. That's spent. And use our spell book to lower it by one. So this is now a five. Just like that. Observation is done. So we get two XP because of that one. Uh, how did I miss that read part? <laughs> how did I even? Oh my god. Okay. So we pass the skill check for observation. You. You read, you read her well and spy her hideout, E5. Following the troll as far as the top of the hill, as the edge of the Doongrass farm, you watch as she, as she hides herself in a shallow valley between two hills and guts the pig one by one, discarding the entrails. It is a shocking sight, if, it, if only because she is able to accomplish the work with a few swipes of her fingernail. With the pigs cleaned and back in her sack, she makes her way quickly down through the hills toward the thin blue of smoke rising from the shoreline. So we reveal discovery card 31. Need to probably read this sometimes. I think I, I was skipping it too much. Thirty one and place one XP on it. Shadowy cave. It's on three. Okay, cool. That's the one that we're missing. And record the keyword sneak. I think we can go there now. I think that's it. We can rest. I don't need. I don't think. I don't think we need it. So we can just go to the shower. Do we cave? F. Yeah, that was a shadowy cave. Otherwise, collect the XP from this one. Okay. You have the keyword talk. We don't. You have the keyword found. We don't. You have the keyword trail. We don't. You have the keyword sneak. Go to F5. Sneaking up to the cave and peeking in, you see a young halfling girl lying on the cave floor. She appears weak, suffering from the curse of illness. Curse or illness. One troll sits near her, while another giant troll woman spits pigs to roast on the fire. We can attempt strength and charisma. Well, we have enough, I think. We can attempt to speak to trolls. I think let's do that, because just like what we did in the last one, we, we, we spoke to, uh, to, what was his name? What was his name? I keep on forgetting his name. We spoke... Oh, it doesn't have a name. <laughs> yeah, basically we spoke to him. So let's try to do that as well. Attempted to speak to trolls. But he was an ogre though. So we do F11. So that's a uh, red strength and charisma, red and purple. Okay. You present yourself to the trolls, introducing yourself as King's Guard and offering to parlay with them for their lives and the life of the halfling girl. The trolls have no idea what you are saying. If one of your juggle favor is higher, each player adds one stamina from the supply to your charisma, ignoring the H attribute. Oh, cool. Skill check, persuasion two. Ooh, it's the first time we're doing two. Persuasion two. How can we even do that? Dice limit of six. So we are rolling six. Oh, because this is combat dice. Oh, she. A six combat? 
six, six dice and we need two purple, two red, and one purple and one blue white. I think we might need to do it. So spend the two, two purple. So we get two purple. One, two. Uh, we spend the red to get a red. And then one white. We don't have a white. We can spend one blue. Spend one blue. So at least that's our selection. Now we just draw two more. Anything good, please. White and the purple. Hey, cool. So we just need to change something into red. Give me good. Give me good reports. Hey, we get one five. Each of the goes there. I can uptake this to a red. To, to there, right? Can decrease this to one. Don't think we can uptake a red. Don't think there's no way for us to uptake a red. We can uptake white if we want to. So let's say this. Let's do that. Let's let's for example do a purple die by one or two using that one. So this is now sold. Now we just need and then this using this. No, no, let's do the flip for that one. So we're using the red is always the problem for us, right? Oh, actually we can use this. You can change any color of die to red. So that's one. That's two two plays already. Okay. And then what we need is the we need to uptake the red. Oh wait, 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 wait. I think we can. Yeah, I think we can do that. So for example, so that's that, that's that. And then we can flip, flip the blue to a five, right? Flip the blue to a five, and then change the color back to a red. Where's that one? Where's the change any color to red? Oh, I only have one of those. I only have one of those. <laughs> Change any uh change any quarter to six. This is the one the flip. That'll be a one. Oh wait, wait. Maybe the better option is since this is a blue, we can just uptick that. I have an uptick for blue, right? So we can use that one, make it a one. So that's one. Two, three, four. So we need to make this four or six into a five red. Uh Oh wait, we can use our illusionist to change this to a five. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, so let's work through that. So these are all the things. Okay, so first, this is set here, five. Then we will increase the purple dye by one or two. So we are increasing it by one. 
or two. So we're JC into three. Now that matches it, so that's done. Now for this one, we are changing it to a red. So any color to a red. That's done as well. And then for this one, we are just uh, minusing it for one. that there and finally we just use our additional powers return to stamina from your intelligence attributes and then we change this to a value of five that's a success and because of that we get two xp with all those back That was a hard persuasion. <laughs> persuasion of two. So we pass the check to F8. Let's see. The trolls invite you to sit by their fire, where they roast pigs seasoned with flakes of purple salt and crushed spices unknown to your palate. The cave fills with an utterly worldly aroma that whets your appetite and awakens the halfling girl from her feverish slumber. She confirms that she is Esther Dunegrass and introduces the troll to you as Urka and Songak. They have been kind, Esther says, but she doesn't speak their tongue well enough to explain her situation. When the meal is over, Esther falls back to asleep with a smile on her face, but her fever is hot as ever. The troll seems very fond of Esther, as almost as if she were their own, but they seem to understand when you say that you must take her away to heal her illness. Okay? Before you go, the troll offers you a gift. Record the keyword Esther. Reveal title card 11. And says, Trolls ally. Hey, hello. King Tarzan sends you to Yolip to fetch the head of a giant troll. You discover two trolls, but you befriended them. The king's great hall will be missing the prize, but the trolls will remember your kindness. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot. That was the... That was the... Uh, that was the mission. Okay. Uh, re reveal rare card number 25. Oh, second rare card. Where is it? Where is it? Ooh, it's a green taker. So any color. Uh... Less on the king's favor again, yikes, and plus on the dragon's favor. Move your party marker to location A. Read entry A5. Ooh, that's it. A5. First time we've been pushed like that. Find the town, sorry, you find the town healer. Sorry about that. Find the town healer and leave Esther in their care. Grateful that you have returned the dune grass girl. The whole tower turns to celebrate. There is wine and song, good cheer and ham. Many, many victories of the finest hams you have ever had the pleasure to taste. The townsfolk celebrates you and you, you are begged by all to tell the tale of your heroic victory over the troll that plagued their town. Give them a story. Their bards can sing for generations, full of daring deeds and, and more than one untrue. You celebrate, your celebration lasts late into the night. Next morning, you wake early and prepare to wrap up your venture in Jolip. With the town's troll problems addressed and Esther Dungrass returns to her kin, your mission here is complete, leaving you free to explore the area at your leisure. We can look around. Uh, okay, you don't. We didn't exhaust. We can look around in Jolip, A6. So to Yolo, the town square town is much busier today. Everyone has come back out of the hiding and returned to their normal work. So everything looks like everyone is uh, normal now. We can go, maybe we can go back to the chapel and s well, let's go back to Dune Grass Farm maybe. Can we do anything at Dune Grass Farm? Oh wait, let's go back to the Shadowy Cave. Let's go back to the Shadowy Cave and uh, dig Shadowy Cave and dig for seventy four. 
You scrape your shovel against the hard stone granite. It makes a horrible sound and sparks fly. It seems like the shovel won't do much digging here, but it might be useful in some other way. Really? 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 Is there any way we can use a shovel? Oh, sorry, we have to expand one actually, right? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. 12. Uh, let's use shovel and the, because the staff, maybe we can use, is there a way like we can fling the shovel? <laughs> so you actually manage to throw the shovel with your staff sling. It zooms to the back of the cave and thud against something soft and hollow. You find an old wooden door Decayed from many long years of exposure to the mist of the sea. Turning back the door with your shovel, you discover a passage that takes you many miles under the earth, surfa surfacing again in the closed tower of the center of Yolib. On the town of the tower, you can see all of the surrounding countryside. Looking northward, you spy the gleaming metal of the Colossus, a giant automaton sitting, sitting in the Gurling Bay. Where is it? What a lovely view. It's long walk back to the beach cave. Gain 3 XP. Oh. <laughs> okay. Each player returns one stamina from your fatigue box to the supply. And that's it. Uh we we already did that there. We already did that there. And I think we already did that because we went around almost everything. I think that's the end. Right? So if you go back to A5, I think. Uh, you may instead return to the end. So let's go to the end. The end. Your mission resolved. You make a you make preparations for the journey home to Sabek, the capital of Nalos. After a break a breakfast of ham and eggs, you prepare to make your way south. Which titles did you earn? Okay. <laughs> did we do the Smith's hammer? Yes, we do. Before leaving town, you drop in, in on the blacksmith's shop, but Rose is gone. As new smith works the forge. Yes, she left last night, he tells you. Took only a small pack with her and headed south. Said she wasn't coming back. That's weird. You reason that if Rose headed south, perhaps she has bit business in the capital. Maybe your past will cross again in Sabek. And then it says both no. It says, oh, no. Captor of Glimnix, no. Okay, Doom Duntum's return. At the outskirts of town, you encounter a local hog farmer who greets you warmly. As you spend a few moments in the conversation, he mentions that a human pig thief somehow escaped justice and fled the area. He cautions you to take care of the road and bids you a good day. Okay. And we have friend of Gimlix. The gnome you met said you could introduce yourself as his friend to any number, a member of the Starlit Door. You take this as an invitation to join their order. Though you are not sure if it's one you can accept, can members of the King's Guard dabble in the ancient mysteries? You can't imagine the, that Commander Zalek would approve. Even so, you can't help but wonder what else you could learn from the ancient, exploring ancient sites and covering their secrets. Okay. We get Troll's Ally. As you head south, you can't help but worry about the safety of the trolls. They will, find, they will not find themselves welcome to anywhere in Talos. You have befriended enemies of the crown and let them go free. Treason is the legal term of your actions. If, you, anyone, if anyone ever finds about your new friendship, you'll be sent to cool back prison at the gallows. That's bad for us. You return to Sabek that night to find Commander Zalek, unimpressed by your failure to retrieve the troll's head. Rest well tonight, he tells you. Tomorrow we march back to war. And that's it. There is no use for the, uh, the other one, Dun the Duntum's acquaintance. Okay. And conclusion, just as you are drifting off to sleep in a quiet barracks, Commander Zalek storms back in and calls you to attention. Change of plans, he says. There's been an outbreak of vampirism in Undercity. We need to stop the infection before it gets above ground. Vampirism outbreaks were an ugly sight on the battlefield, you remember. The King's Guard turned on one another and spread the infection while the Drago cut their way through your ranks. You can only imagine what Undercity looks like tonight, with its encampments of outcasts and thieves glowing at each other's necks. But your duty is clear. With no other soldiers present, you must take up your weapons again. 
and follow Zalek into the gates of Undercity. And that's it. Uh, so we it's, it's a wrap up. So yeah, we made a mistake here. Uh, I don't understand. What happened. I think once I got the shovel, I said, okay, maybe this is a good weapon, and we can just start start shoveling <laughs> and just miss the entire big text here and says, please do this. There's a troll or something that you have missed. Oh my god. Okay. Well, at least we got there. Uh, okay, so we it's time for the wrap up. We erase all keywords. Journal, stamina uh, cubes, and rest track and supply, sure. Journal map cards. Yep, you can see that. And item cards for the discovery deck. Let's put them all back. 93, 74, 85. I think it's that order. Yeah, let's, let me just quickly wrap this up. Let's see what we can get. Then we can do some upgrades. Uh, 74. Then 85. There we go. And then 93. There we go. And then we have a map cards here of two. It's just two and 31. Discovery card two. There we go. 31. And then return any cards left over the market to the deck. Return all bonus play tokens to the party journals, blah, blah, blah. Oh, we can buy something if you want to, right? Uh, mark the box of the campaign track to correspond to current advance. And sure, we are now on two. You can advance right there if you want. It's okay first. Let's see if we can buy something from the market. Ah. Uh. Let's see, so you draw one. I think let's, let's do another shuffle. Always do shuffle. Trait. I already shuffled the weapon before. Oh, sorry. We got the agent spear before, so let's, let's reshuffle that. Okay, Jewel Dagger, shuffle the scrolls. Skill. We need a way to manipulate red. Thumble, three or five. So we can, what? That sounds weird. We can, any three or five, we can flip. So if you flip a three, it's four. If you flip a five, it's two. Oh, okay. It's very specific. Uh, you can change anything to blue and white. I think that's nice. I'm, and I'm not, I'm not human. So that's six. It costs six. You can draw two extra green cards if you want to. I think this is this is more and much better, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which will leave us with three. Then by a necklace. Oh, it's another runic. We have another runic. Maybe we can use that instead. Two, four, six. Yeah, let's use that. Because we can use them all in one turn. Two, four, six. And that. We have two, four, five. We can buy the dagger. We can uptake a one and a purple. I already can do that, so I don't think I want to do that again. Maybe maybe we can do it twice. Yeah, sure, why not? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, eight. That's all our gold. <laughs> so now it's put back foolish. Put that scroll and skill. And lastly, oh, let's put a marker to these things. That, that, 
we are slowly going into the favor of the Dragul favor. So we're being friendly to the enemies. Now we can do an upgrade. How many do we have? Let's put this back away. We have two, three, six. So we can upgrade to so five, put that away. And do another five if you want, All right? And then we can do a three or three. So we can upgrade our limits maybe. Okay, okay, okay. So we can use five to upgrade our play limit to a five. We can use another five to update our combat dice limit to five rather than four. Is, it, is that much better? Uh, where is that? Advancement, yes. Five XP. Uh, I think so. Let's 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 increase our combat dice limit by one. So now it's five. Um, uh, from our thing, right? From my things in it. Double check. I think it says here, place another additional running random cards. Uh, because we can spend two stamina from a wisdom, which I cannot, and we can return it to our hand. So I think that might be the best case. Grade our wisdom, do our mastery for wisdom. Yeah. We can increase mastery. Oh, it should be one tech already. Maybe I, I, was, I robbed that away. So we already did that for strength. Uh, it says wisdom is the other one. Do we have another one that says that? And dex. Oh, okay, so it's either this, but this only increases. I think that's through the white. So we can do a mastery track for three. So we will be increasing our wisdom by one now. This is now two. All right, and then uh, do we increase our play limit again? So sorry, this is now gone. We, we can increase the play limit one last time. Is there a limit? No, it doesn't say a limit. Okay, sure. We can use five XP again. So our play limit. Card limit now is five. And let's just use our three. <coughs> so we don't rest as much to increase our XP to 20. There we go. And that's it. Thank you for joining. We have leveled up a couple of times now, so increase most of the things that we need. I think we need to specialize more on the inside and then just try to go from that way. Uh, that's it. Thank you for joining. Uh, we can do another session maybe another time, and then we can keep on continuing it. Please do subscribe. Uh, comment if you find anything about how the setup is. Is it all going well? I mean, um, the way I'm doing it in this way, is it much better? or? or any suggestions you might get, right? So anyways, thank you for joining. Bye-bye.